pain has reached epidemic proportions in America. I'm Dr. Paul Christo. This is Aches and Gains. Dr. Paul Christo is one of America's leading experts on relieving pain. He's board-certified, Harvard-trained, and a pain medicine specialist at Johns Hopkins. U.S. News and World Report ranks him as a top doctor and among the top 1% in the nation for pain management. Becker's Review selected him as one of the 70 best pain management physicians in America. He's listed as a super doctor for the Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Northern Virginia area. Aches and Gains is a weekly talk show covering all aspects of pain and pain relief. The human impact is real. Older adults, children, and even infants struggle to cope with pain. But there's hope, and there are treatments that can ease pain and suffering. The show offers compelling stories about people who found relief. We share cutting-edge treatments from contributing experts, and we offer ways to help people cope with their pain. Welcome to the show. Neck pain is a common condition that almost 75% of people experience at some point in life. The joints, intervertebral discs, nerves, and muscles of the neck can all lead to pain. Women, older adults, and those involved in whiplash injuries from car accidents are at increased risk. The good news is that if we develop neck pain, most of us will recover. Jennifer Gray, the co-star of Dirty Dancing and Ferris Bueller's Day Off, joins us today and takes us down her path of overcoming neck pain that almost paralyzed her to winning Dancing with the Stars in 2010. Contributing expert Dr. Ralph Justice then shares his expertise on the best treatments for neck pain. Aches and Gains is supported by Medtronic, Endo Pharmaceuticals, Pentec Health, and Boston Scientific. For live online listening to Aches and Gains, please go to paulchristomd.com. To access podcasts of the show, please go to paulchristomd.com. That's paulchristomd.com. If you have questions or comments for Dr. Christo, especially for upcoming shows, please email him at achesandgains at gmail.com. That's achesandgains at gmail.com. Jennifer Grey, a Golden Globe-nominated actress, suffered from unrelenting and often excruciating neck pain following a car accident. Just about ready to give up, she sought help, which changed her life. She's here to share her journey with pain and the triumph of overcoming it. Jennifer, welcome to Aches and Gains. Thank you so much for having me. To begin, how many years have you suffered from neck pain? I would say between 10 and 15, maybe closer to 20. I'm not sure, like long. It got increasingly bad as time went on. And and what caused it? Well, I was in a car accident, which was like a head-on collision. And in this head-on collision, uh, it was a really serious impact and the my only injury was um, a very severe whiplash. It was a seatbelt injury. Describe what you felt at the time. I knew that I was in enormous pain, and it was a long time ago, but I remember feeling like I was going to seek, you know, a chiropractic help, and I was just trying to get massages, and I just couldn't figure out what to do about it. And I just kind of assumed that because my x-rays that I had right after the accident said that I had no broken bones, there was no MRI, there was none of that. It was just... I was abroad. I just had to, you know, kind of live with it. And then as I got older, it got worse and I started getting chronic headaches, like cervicogenic headaches. Yeah, so it would kind of like wrap around my head and it would become like from my neck and my upper back. It was just all a bit of a muscle spasm. And then I started seeing a chiropractor regularly when I was in pain and he would just adjust me all the time, and I'd get huge relief from the adjustment, but only temporary, and it would always come back, and I'd have to be careful what I did so that I didn't, you know, exacerbate it and cause a flare-up. Jennifer, it sounds like then you had pain in your upper back, your neck, and you had headaches. Did you ever experience pain that shot down your arms? It wasn't so much pain in my hands and arms. It was more numbness, like like they were foam rubber. And Jennifer, was it a whiplash injury, or was it something else? And it turned out that, you know, that I had my spinal cord was compressed and I was, and my head was basically falling off my neck and it was very dangerous that I was being adjusted because I could have been paralyzed so easily. My doc, my uh, spinal surgeon, Dr. Robert Bray at DISC in the Marina, he is the one who I went to before I did Dancing with the Stars to say, you know, am I safe to do this show? And he said, uh, what do you think's wrong with your neck? And I said, well, I, 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 I know that it's always painful, you know, I mean, it goes, it goes through really painful, you know, periods. And he said, well, your head is basically hanging off your neck and your spinal cord is compressed. And if you got rear ended, you would be 
completely quadriplegic and you're already starting to experience some um, spinal cord deteri- um, damage in, in your right leg. And in a couple of years, you won't be able to, your right leg won't work properly. Wow. So you saw the spine surgeon just in time. It sounds like you were having symptoms in other parts of your body as well. I wasn't conscious of it, but when he tested me, you know, when he did the, his exam, and then I, when I saw the film, the MRI film, I was so freaked out. And I'd actually had an MRI a couple of years before, maybe 10 years before. And I was so freaked out by the doctor who said I needed to have surgery. And spinal surgery just sounded so terrifying to me that I just basically put my head in the sand and just decided I'm just going to manage this. You know, it's easy to ignore the pain because we all want to feel as though it's going to go away. I believe that when I was having a flare-up, I couldn't ignore it. And then when I would have a period of like a respite where it just seemed to be gone. And I would literally be afraid to say, it's been a while since my neck has gone out. But I would literally not say it because I thought as soon as I said it, I'd have um, a flare up. And I was just, it was like I was kind of living my life, adapting my life around my neck, like, oh, maybe yoga is not good. Oh, maybe I can't do upper body work. Maybe I can't lift weights. Maybe, and then everything, and I love to be active. And I just started cutting all of these things out of my life and my life started getting a little smaller and smaller. Exactly. Chronic pain can be very confining. And describe how your career as an actress was affected. When I go to a taping of a TV show, I can't really look up at the monitor. When I got tense, it would go into my shoulders and that would tighten my neck and then I'd get a headache. And it made it so difficult when I was working because I would become like distracted by how much pain I was in. Like behind my eyes, it would just kill me. And I remember I was doing my husband's TV show. I was doing um, New Adventures of Old Christine the week before I had my surgery. And I remember, like, you know, having my head tilted up for makeup, you know, like for an hour or whatever. And then the pressure of the live show. <clears throat> and the pain was so great. It was just like I remember just when she was applying my mascara, I just couldn't stop crying. I'm really sorry to hear that. When we come back, we'll talk about having pain and working in the entertainment industry. I'm Dr. Paul Christo on Aches and Gains. Aches and Gains is supported by Medtronic, the global leader in medical technology, alleviating pain, restoring health, and extending life for millions of people around the world. If you have questions or comments for Dr. Christo, especially for upcoming shows, please email him at achesandgains at gmail.com. That's achesandgains at gmail.com. And we're back. You know, Jennifer, I had A.J. Langer on the show as a guest on the topic of fibromyalgia. No, she was on it. I was on a TV show with her. Right. Do you feel that the entertainment industry is not particularly sensitive to actors with chronic pain or, or that actors are simply not revealing their symptoms because they're ashamed? You know, I've tried to not let people know about it because I had a certain amount of shame about it, the way I think a lot of people with chronic pain do. They just feel like maybe it's not real. Maybe it's not a real problem. If you're supposed to do a stunt for yourself, you're supposed to do the stunt for yourself and you're not supposed to be a wuss, you know? And, of course, my husband and eventually my daughter would notice, you know, that it was my neck or I had to lay down on a heating pad. And my daughter would be like, what's wrong? What's wrong with your neck, Mom? What's going on? You know, because you just can't cope. Absolutely. And offering ways to help people cope with their pain is a core message of Aches and Gains. The reason I teamed up with Partners Against Pain is because I really wanted people to know that they had options. I think so many people feel like that's just their it's their lot in life or that's the way it goes or yeah, yeah. they don't have no idea that they have choices. And there's so many actions you can take, which I love that they outline in this, uh, on, you know, www.partnersagainstpain.com. They tell you about keeping a uh, pain journal. And I find that really effective. Like I talk to a lot of my friends cause everyone calls me who's in pain. So I say, okay, do your research, do you make, do your pain journal, figure out who the best doctor is. When you go to the doctor, be able to say, This is what causes flare-ups. This is what relieves it. This is how often it is. This is when it affects me at night. This is where it is. And the more prepared you are, the better results you're going to get out of your doctor because they only have a few minutes to be with you. That's exactly right. And here at Aches and Gains, we're constantly providing cutting-edge treatment options to improve the quality of human life. What now makes you comfortable, Jennifer, sharing your story? One of the most powerful things to me is to help other people. I'm so grateful to my doctors. I'm so grateful that I had the option and the means to get the help I got. I want everyone who's in chronic pain or with any issue to figure out that there's something that they can do 
and that they don't have to take it lying down, that they don't have to be a prisoner. Yes, and, you know, and certainly your neck fusion seems to have freed you from a lot of your pain. In addition to the neck surgery, what other treatments have been helpful for you, like nerve blocks or massage therapy, acupuncture? Oh, baby. I have a <laughs> nerve block, whether I need it or not. No. I had, I've had two recently. And then I had one on my lower spine when I ruptured my disc during Dancing with the Stars. I had it that morning so I could finish the show that night. And um, I find them really effective, you know, when needed. And I just think to be able to also use pain medication as directed, as used appropriately, is a miracle. And to do it with a doctor and to not become your own doctor, to be proactive. And then when it's necessary, you use the pain meds as needed but not as the only solution. And Jennifer, which medicines have been the most successful for you? I can do three Advil three times a day, like for a day, and it almost always will knock it out. And if I do it in, you know, like acutely like that, yes, it'll interrupt whatever spasm or thing is going on. And then I might move on to um, a soma before I go to sleep to interrupt the spasm. And then if it's really bad, maybe once or twice a year, I would use a Vicodin. I also find exercise... It absolutely always has been and still is one of the most effective tools for me. Thank God I don't work in an office, but if I'm driving a lot or I'm flying a lot, yeah. I'm not going to really move my energy, just like flush and get circulation and sweat. Those things release my body and my body like likes it. And how is your pain today? Fantastic. I got a little stiffness in my right shoulder blade at the moment, but I'm going to go back to the hotel I'm going to do a little elliptical. I'm going to do some weights, lifting, you know, because I'm doing shrugs. You know, it's just, it's incredible. And it's almost like it's better than a massage for me. You know, Jennifer, you really are a story of success and triumph over pain through surgery, exercise, and medicines. And I want to thank you so much for joining us today on Aches and Gains. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Up next, Dr. Ralph Justice shares his expertise on the most effective treatments for reducing neck pain on Aches and Gains. Aches and Gains is supported by Pentec Health, one of the nation's largest pharmacy and nursing companies, dedicated solely to providing in-home care for patients with implanted pumps used for the treatment of severe pain or spasticity. To access podcasts of the show, please go to paulchristomd.com. That's paulchristomd.com. Welcome back. Dr. Ralph Justice is a pain medicine specialist in the Department of Neurosciences at St. Anthony Hospital in Oklahoma City. He was an assistant professor at Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center, is a lecturer for the World Institute of Pain, and has been an invited guest speaker on treating head and neck pain. Dr. Justice, welcome to Aches and Gains. Oh, well, thank you, Paul. Ralph, how common is neck pain? Well, uh, neck pain is actually pretty common. Uh, I believe it ranks third amongst the uh, uh, main complaints of patients uh, right behind headaches and, and low back pain. So it's, it's quite common. In fact, it's very common in both the United States and industrialized countries. Dr. Justice, in general, if we develop neck pain, how likely is it that we'll recover? From my experience uh, and from reading the literature, and neck pain usually resolves on its own uh, from its initial injury uh, within three months in most patients. A small small percent of, uh, of the population will actually develop chronic neck pain, uh, and very small, I think somewhere like 6 to 8%, and that's usually determined if it lasts longer than six months. It's great to know then that if we develop neck pain, it's not likely to persist. Definitely, definitely. Again, it depends on what's causing it, uh, but uh, usually it will resolve on its own within three months. Ralph, who's at risk for neck pain? In the younger uh, adults, uh, people who exercise a lot, say gymnasts are at higher risk, um, athletes like football players are at higher risk. Uh, in the older adults, uh, as, we, as we age, we become uh, more at risk, uh, secondary to uh, this kite loss is just a normal part of aging. And any patient that has, a, for example, like rheumatologic disease, you're also at increased risk for neck pain. And speaking of increased risk, it seems like there's a correlation between low back pain and neck pain. From personal experience, I can tell you that, yes, uh, a lot of my patients that, that do have neck pain also have low back pain. And, and, and that would make sense if you've got some sort of arthritic changes that's causing your pain. It, it makes sense that it would, it would occur in the neck as well as your low back. You know, Ralph, in my experience, neck pain can happen spontaneously or be due to trauma. 
What are the most common causes of neck pain? As we age, uh, degenerative disc disease, uh, this in itself can, can lead to changes in the joints in our neck, and this can cause pain. Uh, you get, there's also something called cervical spondylosis, uh, which, again, uh, is partly from uh, degenerative disc disease. Uh, and, ag- again, uh, tumors, infections can also cause pain, although not as likely as, as the aforementioned. You know, in my mind, I sort of subdivide neck pain into pain that could be caused by the soft tissue of the neck, like the fascia, the ligaments, the tendons, the muscles, or the spine, like the joints or the discs. How do you characterize it? That's actually how I think about it when I see my patients and I examine my patients. Let's now talk about whiplash injury. That's the effect on the neck after a rear-end motor vehicle accident causing extreme flexion and then extension of the neck. Ralph, what's actually going on inside the neck in someone who experiences this injury? It's more of a what we call acceleration-deceleration injury, where the joints of your neck kind of get pulled apart and then they come back together again. And these patients get uh, ligamental injury. They, their muscles become strained. Sometimes you can have a traumatic injury to the disc itself. That's why they complain of a diffuse neck pain. Exactly. A lot of my patients do complain of not only a diffuse neck pain, but neck stiffness, sometimes headaches, dizziness, and even memory problems. When we come back, we'll talk to Dr. Justice about the best treatments for whiplash injury. I'm Dr. Paul Christo, and you're listening to Aches and Gains. Aches and Gains is supported by Endo Pharmaceuticals, a U.S.-based specialty healthcare solutions company that delivers innovative diagnostics, drugs, devices, and clinical data to meet the needs of patients in areas such as pain, urology, oncology, and endocrinology. For live online listening to Aches and Gains, please go to paulchristomd.com. That's paulchristomd.com. And we're back talking about whiplash injury with Dr. Ralph Justice, who's a head and neck pain specialist. Uh, Ralph, what are some of the more effective treatments for the pain of whiplash injury? Well, initially, uh, the best treatment, in my opinion, is, is always conservative. So I'll put them on um, anti-inflammatories like meloxicam or even plain ibuprofen, and then have them start with physical therapy with small range of motion. And if after three months these patients don't get better, then at that point I, I'll consider different treatment. But I like to start conservative treatments first. And Dr. Justice, if conservative treatments really just don't do the trick, what's your next step? Well, at that point, um, uh, I'll inject uh, the muscles around the neck or the the actual joints, right, that are causing pain. If the pain is, is out of proportion compared to the way the patient presents, at that time, I may even consider this possibly a red flag, meaning uh, we may have to order some imaging techniques like an MRI to see if there's, if there's actually a disc that's injured and, and, you know, dig a little further, see what's causing the pain. Maybe we can treat that pain that way. So, Ralph, it sounds like first you would inject the muscles around the neck and then also consider injecting the facet joints, or that is the nerves that supply sensation to the facet joints. And then if those are successful, that is, they reduce pain, you would then follow that up with heat therapy called a denervation that essentially interrupts the pain signals from the neck. I might. Depends on the uh, kind of relief the patient gets. If they get pretty good relief from the injections and and the pain comes back, then I will do the uh, denervation where I heat the uh, tissues up around the nerves. And that usually works pretty well. If we think about neck pain in general, it's really most likely due to muscle or ligament problems rather than a tumor or an infection. And, And speaking of those, to. Let's talk about some of the danger signs that, that patients present with that could signal a more severe problem in their neck. So a danger sign would be like uh, what we call like uh, decreased reflexes or, or decreased strength in, in one arm or, or the other arm or both, or something like pain shooting down one arm with, with what we call sensory changes if, if, it's, if it doesn't feel right or it feels different from the other arm. Things like this I, w- I would call a, a red flag per se, a danger sign. So if the patient presents like this initially, this will be one of my first steps. But if it just happens spontaneously and and they do have a fever or they have a history of tumors, then I'm suspicious maybe there's something else going on. At that point, I would uh, get imaging also. Dr. Justice, we talked earlier about the use of the anti-inflammatories to reduce neck pain. What about things like cyclobenzaprine or flexoril and Xanaflex or tizanidine, which are muscle relaxants? I found the patients that have a set joint disease or pain in the joints of the neck really doesn't help too much. They do work uh, for more of an acute type injury uh, for like a whiplash injury. But for chronic neck pain, I haven't found uh, 
that they work very well. We were just speaking with Jennifer Gray, who told us that she uses Soma to help treat her neck spasms. What is your experience with Soma? You know, I... Uh, a lot of patients like Soma. I don't like to use Soma because it has a metabolite, uh, meprobamate, which can't build up in your system. So I, I try to avoid Soma at all if I can. Ralph, let's next talk about neuropathic neck pain and the drugs that can be useful for them, like specific antidepressants or anticonvulsants. I'll try like amitriptyline or nortriptyline, which has a little better side effect profile. That in combination with everything that else that we give them, like the muscle relaxers and the injection therapy, I think they all help. But each individually, I'm not sure that they work as well. You know, for shooting pain, like you mentioned, I will use either Neurontin or, or Lyrica, pregabalin. That actually works really good for that type of neuropathic pain. Yeah, you know, for the pain that starts in the neck and shoots down the arm that's neuropathic, I've also found those drugs to be very useful. When, Ralph, in your experience, are epidural steroid injections into the neck region most helpful? Typically, uh, when I find the cause is coming from uh, a disc likely bulging out, maybe pushing on a nerve root, um, these patients typically present with pain that shoots down the arm. So this is when it's most often, I think it works the best. In addition to epidural steroid injections, I think spinal cord stimulation can be quite effective in reducing that pain that starts in the neck and shoots down the arms. You know, Jennifer Gray mentioned that she had significant spinal cord compression, and as a result, had cervical fusion or, or neck surgery that really benefited her. What do you tell patients who ask you about neck surgery? Um, at first, we look at the films, and, and I'll, I'll tell them, I think this is possibly something that's correctable with surgery or not correctable. Uh, at that point, I would send them over to the surgeon. But prior to sending them to them, I always tell them, um, you, know, you know, if you're not having some sort of as we mentioned earlier, some sort of weakness or, or sensory changes. Uh, you know, the surgery itself may not take that away. In fact, it may actually worsen your pain. Uh, maybe this is something we can we can try to fix uh, with with a stimulation. Um, if we can't fix it, you know, we could do the trial. If the trial doesn't work, then you could always try to see the surgeon. But uh, I, I, I try to keep my patients away from neck surgery. So, Ralph, wrapping up, what's the most important message for those with neck pain? Well, the most important message is, you know, give it time, uh, see if, if, if it will resolve. Uh, if, if you get into some sort of um, injury, like a whiplash injury, a car accident, something like that, uh, give it a little time. Go see your primary care physician. Try simple medications. Uh, try physical therapy. Uh, try to increase your range of motion in your neck. Think, make your muscles stronger. Give it time. If after three months you're not getting better, at that point, seek medical help. Uh, see a pain management specialist or, or possibly even a, a surgeon, um, and then they let them treat your, your pain. Uh, but uh, more often than not, roughly 90 to 95% of people will get better with time. Dr. Ralph Justice, thanks so much for joining us today on Aches and Gains. Well, thank you, Paul. Thank you for having me. Aches and Gains is supported by Medtronic, Endo Pharmaceuticals, Pentec Health, and Boston Scientific. For live online listening to Aches and Gains, please go to paulchristomd.com. To access podcasts of the show, please go to paulchristomd.com. That's paulchristomd.com. If you have questions or comments for Dr. Christo, especially for upcoming shows, please email him at achesandgains at gmail.com. That's achesandgains at gmail.com. Here's an email from Connor in South Dakota. My father has had shingles for over a year. Do you have recommendations for alleviating the pain? He's used about all the medicines and patches that his doctor prescribed to no avail. Well, Connor, if all the medicines haven't provided enough relief, I'd consider a treatment known as spinal cord stimulation. This involves placing a small wire on top of the spinal cord and using tiny doses of electricity to stimulate the cord. It sounds like an extensive procedure, but it really isn't. A trial, sort of like a test drive, is done first, and the wire is placed through the skin under x-ray guidance. The patient is awake or in a twilight sleep for the procedure. The electrical stimulation can reduce pain, and this treatment has shown to be helpful in research studies. The views and opinions expressed in this radio program are solely the views of Dr. Paul Christo and do not necessarily express the views of this radio station and Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, nor an endorsement by any or all of them of any of its content. This show provides medical information, not advice. Please consult your personal physician before engaging in any course of treatment or use of any of the techniques or products discussed on this show. 
Discussion of particular uses of products on this show have not been approved by any of the manufacturers of such products. Follow us on Twitter at Dr. Paul Christo and like us on Facebook, Aches and Gains. To access podcasts of the show, please go to paulchristomd.com. That's paulchristomd.com. Aches and Gains is produced by Tom Blair and Ty Ford. Elsa Langford is the technical consultant and engineer. Dr. Paul Christo is the executive producer. Thanks for listening. This is Aches and Gains with Dr. Paul Christo.